Good morning. It's time for chapel. The text is Matthew chapter 12, verses 14 to 21. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Matthew chapter 12. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him. He healed them all and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. O Lord, have mercy upon us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord is like the Samaritan we will hear about on Friday. He does not draw attention to his own work, he is not desperate to let the world know that he is a good Samaritan. This seems strange to us. We have sometimes entertained the agnostic's gambit that Jesus could be believed if only he had announced himself a bit more clearly and undoubtedly as Lord and God. But of course, he has. In the flesh and in time, bound willingly by all the limits of reality, subject also to the lies of those who play with history, despite the confirming testimony of his many witnesses. In that time when he stopped on the way to his resurrection to heal a withered hand, there was no room for doubt. The Pharisees were certainly counting the evidence, the evidence against him, and thus what opposes him then and now was never blindness or the accidental ignorances of time, it is the sinful human heart which rejects even the Lord who would save it. When Jesus withdraws from the Pharisaical conspiracy, then, he does not depart in fear and trembling, but because his hour has not yet come. He does not hide, he evades. His mercy frustrated those who despise mercy, now he also frustrates their vengeance. And thus it is not out of self-preservation that he says to those whom he heals, do not make me known, so that he might slink about unnoticed. No, this is done according to the scriptures, Isaiah 42. The Lord has chosen his servant and sent him, not merely a prophet, but his own beloved son with whom he is well pleased. He has put his spirit on Jesus at his baptism, anointing him his Christ. All of this is a poetic and prophetic way of testifying that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, a confession only the Father can reveal. But what if those who bear the Lord's name refuse his Spirit's testimony? Then Isaiah's testimony becomes tragic. He is anointed to proclaim righteousness to the Gentiles. This is not a time marker, then, when it says that Jesus withdrew from there and ordered them not to make him known. No, indeed, Christ is instead kicking the dust off his feet. Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. I go now to the Gentiles. We learn today that there is a limit to Christ quarreling and crying aloud. He is not out to fill the streets with his own fame at any cost. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And let no one dare to object and say that they would have believed if they had more proof, if indeed someone should rise from the dead. How often the Lord would have gathered them under his wings, but they would not. And so the Lord opposes the proud, and he will oppose us also if we object to him as he has revealed himself in the scriptures. But, but he gives grace to the humble which, astonishingly, the Gentiles have freely received. This Lord snaps reeds set against him like twigs. He snuffs out burning flames in every hostility, but he is tempered toward those in need. 
He does not press his advantage to death, this Lord of Lords. He is not out to destroy man robed in contempt of him, even if it is true that he will not brook our cool and careless enmity forever. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, and the well who have no need of him, he will, will not stop him in this endeavor. We often see them use callously the lame, the sick, the wi- and the withered as bait in their traps for Jesus. Such people are neither bruised nor smoldering. Yet see how they snap and quench themselves, because these sick have every need of this physician. And they know it, and they love him for it. Even when ordered to remain quiet, they cannot. They are witnesses for Jesus, not against him, as his enemies intend. Such is the Lord's great compassion, poured out from his heart and belly, yes, even from his wounded side. He does not deliver here the coup de grace. He has true mercy at his own expense. After this, the Gentiles hope and have followed him. God be praised, if only his kinsmen would also. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with gladness. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org slash chapel.